So two different people asked me about, hey, testing and what tests can I take and all this stuff. So it sounds like we should probably talk about it really quick. Um, we're taking about one test, one full test a weekend, right? Because on the weekend we do the full test. Not every weekend, but um, that's actually a pretty good amount because uh, it takes a decent amount of time to review that test, figure out the questions you got wrong, figure out the questions you got right but you weren't totally sure about, you know, and learn from it. So uh, that could be quite a bit. If you feel like that's not enough, either you're scoring very high, which is great news, and you might need to do more, or you're not necessarily gleaning enough from each test, right? Um, and then people can go in the opposite extreme and they can try to glean too much, right? They're like, I've been reviewing the test, the diagnostic for the last two weeks, and there's probably still stuff you could learn from it, but it might be best just for your sanity to, to move on, start drilling, and then take another test sometime and learn from that, right? So, um, in any case, here's a general rule of thumb. I would say don't do more than one full test a week. Now, some of you aren't working. Is anyone here not working? Okay, awesome. That's very rare, as you can see. Um, well, I'm in school. Oh, you're in school. I'm sorry for lack of clarification. You're in school as well? Okay, so you still have some sort of a job. <laughs> and some people just, you know, LSAT's their life, which is very unusual. But in any case, I would suggest not doing more than one test a week unless you're in that really small segment of society that has nothing to do but the LSAT. Um, because even if you want to do more tests, you're like, hey, I, I want to do more, I'm itching to make more progress, blah, blah, blah. Well, um, it's probably more effective to spend your time doing a time 35 minute section. Because the thing about a time 35 minute section is you do it, and then you can immediately review it, start thinking about what was I thinking, why did I get that wrong, why am I so stupid, you know, cut, you gotta cut that talk out. but you have that opportunity to really glean some takeaways from that time section. And my goal in my mind is if every time you do a time section you can have one takeaway, I mean realistically more like three or four, it's not that hard. To, there's 25 questions, right? There's going to be some things you mess up. Anything you mess up is a great opportunity to learn. Like what did I do wrong? Even if it's something stupid, um, what did you do wrong? What could you do better next time? And keep that in mind. Um, but in any case, every time you do a time second, if you can just learn like one concrete thing, that is going to dramatically affect your score over the long run because the LSAT just repeats itself over and over again. And there's only 100 questions in the LSAT. So if you learn one thing, that's probably going to affect whatever section you take next in some way, shape, or form, right? Because they're just so repetitive. Um, and anyways, the point is, is you spend 35 minutes doing a time section, you review it, uh, that's usually a more effective use of your time than a full test. Because most people, when they take a full test, they take it, and then they're exhausted. So they don't review it, usually even that day, right? The next day, they're like, oh, I should go over that test. Then they start going over it, and they're like, I don't remember why I chose D. I see why it's wrong now. And it's just like, it's not a great use of your time. Now, we do them, of course, because you don't want to show up in test day and be like, wow, five of these back-to-back, -back. well, that's really fun. <laughs> right? you like, you got to get you know, some experience with that, but at the same time, when it comes to effectiveness, you have this like trade-off. Tests are give you the full-length experience, the endurance, but you don't really get the great review out of it. Time sections, you do get the timing and the review, so that's kind of the middle road and ideal. Drilling is nice because it just takes the review to the next level, right? Because you're doing a question and immediately reviewing it, so you're getting that instant feedback, and that's valuable as well. Although you don't get the timing aspect of it, so that's a, kind of a downside. So you have those three things, drilling, time sections, time tests, and I would say do at most one time test a week. Sometimes people are just doing them every other week. Time sections, anywhere from one to four a week, right? So now you're looking at two tests. You're doing two tests a week. If you do one, four sections a week, and then one test on the weekend, that's two tests already. Plus drilling, fill in the gaps wherever you have time. Um, you know, that's good use of time. Now because we're at the beginning of the class, I've been pushing drilling mainly, because I just want you to get comfortable with the things that we're talking about. Over time, you'll start adding more time sections and kind of alternating between drilling and time sections and only doing time tests on the weekend. Question? Do you feel like when you're drilling, it's more useful to like really something apart than to worry about timing and then focus on timing. And time 
sometimes sections, because I feel like a lot of times when I miss things, sometimes sections, it's because I ran out of time, and then I spent too much time on it, so I don't know how to, like, increase my speed while also not being, like, not, but also, like, not missing stuff because I'm not learning because I'm trying to do it fast. Yeah, so in general, I would focus on understanding and not worry about speed, even when you're doing the time section, which is hard to do. But, um, like, you don't want to be absurdly slow or something while you're doing drilling, right? Like, you want to do it like you kind of anticipate that you would do it on test so that all these things are the same, so you're not changing anything when you go to a time section or changing anything when you go to a time test. Um, but as you normalize, as you try to make all of those the same, what you're going to find is that you're going to slow down a little bit in time sections and time tests, and maybe, I wouldn't say speed up, but just try to do it more like normally. But what you can do in drilling is you can do the question normally, like you would expect, kind of like, okay, I'm trying to understand, but I'm also moving along like I would expect to move along. But then before you hit submit, you can just wait and say, okay, well, this is what I would answer right now, but let me think. If I'm not 100% confident about that answer, take that time to think about it before you hit submit so you can be reviewing and pushing yourself a little bit further um, without knowing what the correct answer is. Because what's weird is like as soon as you know the correct answer, I mean everybody does it, and I don't think we're lying, but we're like, oh yeah, that makes sense, but if I say, okay, explain it to me, there's all this like jumble. I right? was like, well, yeah, I mean, it's just like it's better. Yeah, it's clear. It's, it's it's the right answer. It's like yeah, you haven't said anything, and you wouldn't have you know if we just went back in time three seconds, you would be just as confounded as you were until you saw the answer. So, um, one other thing I was gonna say is that <clears throat> I know that a lot of us are juggling a lot of different things. In general, you want to study when you're sharpest, because if you're studying like when you're tired or something like that and you get questions wrong because you're tired or because you <laughs> haven't eaten well that day or I don't know, whatever, you're just not in the right mindset, you can actually start developing sort of bad habits, right? You're just training yourself to do this, which is not what you want to do. You want to work on the LSAT when you're feeling focused and ready and then when you're kind of running out of steam, just stop. It's probably a better use of your time. Like there's this desire to get things done, but that can actually be counterproductive. So you just do the best you can with the time you got, and try to schedule time in your week like we talked about earlier. And if you don't get the score you want to get by the time your test comes around, it's okay. As long as you're making progress, just sign up for the next test and keep working towards that. And you'll know pretty well before you take the test officially, kind of where you're scoring. You're going to be somewhere in that five point, six point range. So you're like, hey, I'm close to where I want to be, or no, I'm not. So I'm just going to postpone, and then you won't even have a record. If you withdraw from the test, there's no indication that you signed up. You lose your money, but it's better just to take it when you're ready to get your best score. And then really, everything is downhill from there. People are trying to game it sometimes, like, well, okay, I can't get my score by this, but I'll take this, and then I'll apply, blah, blah, blah. It's like, just focus on the test, just get the best score you can get, and once you get that score, Everything becomes so much easier, application-wise, etc. Anyways, that's kind of a tangent, but questions? Yes? I have a question about uh, timing on the test. So when, um, when I did like the time section, it gives you like your time, like it shows you, but it gives you the option to hide it. Mm -hmm. On the actual LSAT, will it give you the option to hide it? Yeah. It does? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you recommend that we start doing time sections like this week, or should we keep focusing? Well, it is going to be different for everyone. It's kind of a function of how well you're doing. So if you're already scoring pretty well in a section, the better, you, like, if you can only eke out, well, let's just say 10, 10 to 12 points in a section, that's a section where you should be predominantly drilling and just getting your mind wrapped around, how do I do this? But if you start getting, like, oh, I'm getting, I can get 15 to 20 correct in a section, then it probably makes sense to go back and forth between drilling and time sections. And then um, maybe more drilling. So you do two days of drilling, one time section, two days of drilling, one time section. 
Um, but <clears throat> if you start to get like 20, 25 questions correct in a section, then you can really start doing that, like those time sections quite a bit. Drilling is still valuable in that circumstance because the demon's gonna give you the hardest questions, right? Which is actually a better use of your time because in a section, half the questions are difficulty one to two, three, and you're like, these are boring for me. So you're not really learning from that, but you're spending time on it. But at the same time, you're getting the timing experience and that's most similar to the actual test. So for some of us, we may just want to keep drilling this week. But for some of us, we may say, hey, I'm gonna add in a time section one day. Whereas other of us may be doing four time sections. We're like, yeah, I'm already kind of where I want to be and I'm gonna do one every day, review it, and then do drilling just when I have time. Thank you. Yeah? Any other questions? Yeah? Do you recommend splitting up our time between sections or like if I suck at logic games, should I just put all of my effort into that? Okay, yeah, so in general, I would say most people benefit from when they do time sections, they just start with like test 50, section one, and then they go to test 50, section two, section three, section four, and then they go to test 51, section one, and they just march their way up because it forces them to go through all the sections, rotate through them, right, and not like cherry pick and end up actually spending their time where they shouldn't. Um, and then on top of that, if they suck at one section, like game, is it games you said? Then compensate by drilling more in games. Now you can say, look, I'm really bad in games, and then decide to also like kind of jimmy your time sections. You you just have to you have to be careful. I a lot of people feel like they're really bad in one, especially games, but if you look at the points they're losing, they're actually not losing that many points more than they are compared to the other sections because there's two LR and reading comp has so many questions. So I would focus on the number of questions you get wrong in each section. So if you're getting like 12 wrong in games and one or two wrong in logical reasoning, then it does make sense to do more logical game sections or logic game sections. But most people are only getting like six wrong in games which means that they're getting like 16 correct and they're focusing on that 16 correct and they're like, well in LR I'm getting 18 correct, but the reality is you're still getting about the same, you're losing about the same number of points in each section, so distributing your time should be equal between all the sections. It's kind of a long-winded answer, but it depends on how bad it really is. Yeah. But you can always compensate with more drilling be like, you know what, I'm going to rotate through the sections for time sections, but for drilling, I'm always just going to do games and just really, like, do tons of that. Uh, on yeah. The, on the test, is there exactly 100 questions, or are there, like... There's anywhere from 98 to 102. Okay. So, so there's no, like, extra built-in questions that, like, like, free questions, I guess, that if you get them wrong, it doesn't count against the 100? No. There's okay, no, like, so bonus so questions. Okay, yeah. Okay, all right.